Using electricity to treat depression is nothing new. Shocking and controversial in its day, electroconvulsive therapy rose to prominence in the 50s and 60s. But terrible side effects earned it an infamous reputation. By the 1970s, novel developments in antidepressant drugs shelved ideas about what else could be achieved with brain stimulation. Treating depression is complex. Established treatments like ECT and antidepressants work for some, but not all. Now there's renewed interest in other types of brain stimulation to treat mental illness. And some say it may even make you smarter. TMS, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, essentially involves using a pulsed magnetic field. That passes into the brain really without any resistance. And when you apply a magnetic field to something that conducts electricity, you induce a current. So it actually makes the nerve cells in the, uh, in the brain fire. In transcranial magnetic stimulation, if you put a magnetic coil on the motor areas of the brain, the firing nerve cells will make the patient's finger move. Apply it to visual areas of the brain and they might see flashes of light. But in the case of treating depression, the magnetic field is applied to the left prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain most responsible for happiness. And what tends to happen then is if you're making nerve cells fire repeatedly many thousands of times, you make them change their activity levels. And that way we can very specifically target changes in somebody's brain in a way that hopefully has therapeutic benefit. Good morning, we'll get you all set up. Depression is very complex. Initially, my doctor prescribed me with antidepressants. They helped me to a point, but I still felt that I could have been better. So you just got to measure up your position for your coil. Eventually, Jan underwent TMS therapy at Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre. I w went on to a trial that allowed me to have treatment each day, and I came in here after work. So what does it feel like, Jan? It just feels like someone's tapping on the side of your head. It's not painful. After about the third session, I noticed I was just falling asleep. All right. And felt quite relaxed. Have a nice nap. Yes. <laughs> I was quite surprised at how some of my thoughts were changing. And all of a sudden, this thought came into my head, oh, wow, what a great day. And I kind of looked around and thought, where did that come from? We tend to find about 45% of the patients we treat get a really substantial antidepressant response. Another 20% or so get benefit without it perhaps being life-changing. And at about 35%, the, the patients don't respond at all. OK, you're all finished, Jan. For patients like Jan, TMS is already available as a treatment for depression at outpatient clinics across Australia. But researchers are trialling a similar therapy called transcranial direct current stimulation, which may also help people with depression. OK, I'm just going to put these on, Jenny, so it's a little bit wet. Transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS for short, uses a really tiny electrical current. We apply TDCS through two pads placed on the head, you know, roughly about here and here. And it's just a gentle, ongoing stimulation that, if you like, sort of tunes up the brain, the brain cells. Unlike TMS, TDCS doesn't use a magnetic field. Instead, a weak electrical current is thought to enter the brain, subtly influencing the way brain cells interact with charged particles, or ions. So all of this is kept in a very fine, finely tuned balance. So what, what seems to happen when people are depressed is that that fine balance is being disturbed. OK, that all looks good, so we're going to start. So what you do by restoring the balance is that you're restoring it to a normal level of activity. I have been ill now for about 15 years. Once the depression hit, I often simply couldn't bear to talk to people. I couldn't open my mouth without crying. Jenny took part in a research trial of TDCS at the Black Dog Institute. And although the study is still underway, Jenny seems to have received some relief from her symptoms. 
it's been so subtle. Perhaps my ability to listen has increased. Perhaps my ability to express myself has increased. It just seems that there are these little repairs happening along the way. The potential to use direct current stimulation to treat mental illness is yet to be fully realised, but one of the more interesting claims about this technology is that it may accelerate learning, improve memory and generally make you smarter. I first became interested in TDCS in my undergrad where it was referenced quite a lot in neuroscience and psychology as a relatively easy, safe, an effective way of manipulating brain function. Peter isn't alone. TDCS devices are widely available online, and there's a growing subculture of home users who claim that TDCS can improve cognitive function. Commonly, I might use it because at the end of the day, having to do some extra work, in that case, prefrontal stimulation does seem to have a slight improvement on my vigilance and attentiveness. But is direct current stimulation safe to use at home? We just don't know. What we've done so far doesn't show any risks. And if people are taking these devices and using them at home, they have to be aware that doing that is something that's completely outside the realms of what, what has been studied or what we know is safe. But aside from the potential risks, one researcher questions whether direct current stimulation has any effect at all on healthy brains. I started research with TDCS about four years ago, and at the time I was really, really excited about this technology. And over the course of about two, two and a half years, I tried any number of things. I did auditory threshold testing, visual threshold testing. On this task, your job is just gonna be to take a look at the squares as they pop up, try and remember what order they came in. Working memory, reaction time tasks, inhibition, attention, just any number of studies, and I just never got any solid results. Searching for evidence that direct current stimulation actually worked in healthy brains, Jared conducted a quantitative analysis of 15 yeah. years' worth of TDCS research. What did you find in this analysis? In our analysis, a study had to have been repeated at least one time by different groups. So what we did is we, we pooled all replicable data out there. Unfortunately, what we ended up finding, regardless of how we chose to pool things, was nothing was really coming up really strongly significant. So you're saying you weren't able to find any notable effect on direct current stimulation on healthy brains to improve cognition? Yes. Uh, so now, again, there are studies out there that do show improvement. Some say it did improve it, some say it didn't, some say it impaired it. Yep. And when all those things come together, you tend to even out. Jared's analysis has been divisive in the field of neuropsychiatry. So what he was pointing out was, if you put together all the, the studies, you know, the effects are not as impressive as, say, the early few studies, which I think is a valid comment. But I think the wrong way to understand that study would be to say that the whole thing's a waste of time uh, and that nothing is happening. I don't think that's correct either. Well, I wouldn't say at all that this proves that TDCS doesn't do anything, and I wouldn't say that it proves it does do something. The only thing that this report will say is that there's not uh, compelling evidence to suggest that TDCS is reliable. So it's possible that it does something, it just is really hard to find or narrow in on what that something is. Whether or not brain stimulation works in healthy brains, this technology is already giving hope to many suffering depression. And future research promises to further our understanding of the human brain. If this program has raised personal concerns, you may wish to contact one of these counselling services for further information or advice.